Okay. Testing, testing. Hello, Harold. All right, so. Adam, hello. If everyone can hear me, let me uh, shout out if you can hear the sound of my voice. And uh, let's get let's get cracking. Hope you can see my screen, and that um, everything's good with you guys today. Hopefully, I won't have to press the uh, microphone into my nostrils because I moved my entire desk away from that thrice damned HVAC unit. So, uh, seeing a little bit more of my junky studio and the thumbnail of your of your screen or your phone or wherever you are in the world right now. So, all right, let's get, let's get popping. I don't know what this is. What is that? Oh, that's right. That's one of my, some of my reference there. Um, so today I'm going to keep on working on this. Like I said, I was, and, uh, I know somebody out there and somebody out there is watching from like Italy or something going, Oh my God. Why is he still working on that? That's my uh that's my bad Italian accent. Um So I'm sorry. This is uh this is what it takes. So I'm going to have some little bit of fun uh playing with this face. You're going to see me toggle layers off and on at random multiple times um while I try to figure out and see the values in color while I work. It's just going to be, it might just be a minute of me just doing this off and on, off and on, off and on, um, or playing with the different temperatures and things like that. Just want to let you know that your screen is not flickering. It's not freezing up. It is just me spazzing out being indecisive. So, oh, that's right. Uh, if you are not aware of where you are, or you just stumble in here by accident on your way to, uh, trying to find Jojo Siwa's Twitch stream. You are in the CG Spectrum uh, illustration block. I am your host, uh, Eric Wilkerson. And uh, today, I am going to paint the severed head of a goldfish alien. When you woke up this morning, you probably did not think you were going to hear a human being say that. No other human being on the face of this planet will say that to you today, so you're welcome. Okay. Um, I named my layers as I had said I would. Still don't know where stuff is. There it is. All right, so let's refine this a bit. Um, I'm going to move away from the girl for a little bit, and I'm going to come back to her because she's very important to the overall thing. And I wanted to add a little bit of a, a depth of field, little glowy light source behind them to try to get that arena feeling going. And I was able to flip and warp and adjust some colors uh, from like scenes like this. Uh, this is Times Square in New York City. If you've never been to New York City, this is what it looks like everywhere. It's just neon. Um, all right, so there you go. So that's in the background. Stuff and junks. So, and I have, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, I should probably share my the rest of this screen. So you talking about oh you couldn't see what I'm talking about I didn't show the rest of my screen with you so this is New York City you didn't already see that it's Times Square like a piece of Times Square like the clean part all right anyway that's right fucking junk about my home state whatever I can do it because I live there I used to whatever all right so I have this alien reference here. Uh, this is uh, a sculpture that I did many, many moons ago, which is going to serve as my reference for my goldfish. Um, 
So it kind of matches the same lighting that I have in the armor, the spotlight effect I have going on on her uh, upper torso, and I want to continue that uh, in the wetness and, and all that on the face. Harold saying, I wasn't sure if you were going all the way with the goldfish idea. A goldfish alien sounds fun. Uh, I want to try making one now. Go for it. Make it violent, but dumb looking because goldfish have like the memory span of like a goldfish. So they, they isn't it like they can only retain, they forget things like two seconds, 10 seconds, memory span, something like that. So violent, but dumb. Go for it. I would love to see it. If you're a student of CG Spectrum, uh, work it up and tag me in it. All right? Post it in that general DigiPaint and uh, tell the world that I inspired you to make a dumb looking goldfish alien. All right. Or if you're not a student at CG Spectrum, still tag me in it. Tell the world that I inspired you to make a dumb looking goldfish alien. I'll be thrilled by that. Like, see, that's all me. I did that. I did that. I am. I am not a humble person. <laughs> Violent but dumb. There you go. All right. So, um, probably. I'm gonna just work this up and see where it. This is. So, uh, different from the, the way I handled sketching out the armor and stuff of this body very loosely and mostly with value, um, I'm thinking that I really want to have a pretty solid line work, line drawing for this alien. And... Anybody that does creature design outside of ZBrush, if they're doing it like with pencil or, or you know, 2D art in Photoshop, knows how difficult it is to turn a uh, turn a form to make this flat 2D object feel three dimensional and be thinking about this character in three dimensions as you're drawing it on a 2D surface. Um, are the eyes aligned? Is the is it symmetrical, or is this part aligned with this part? Um, it's a lot easier to do with a human face because a human face is something we see all the time, and you'll know if there's something off. Hopefully, you will know if there's something off with your drawing. But when you're doing an alien or something that doesn't exist. Having a uh, solid reference really helps. And part of the reason I'm using an existing photo reference uh, for this is because uh, I don't know what the rights, usage rights are. I should probably take a minute to like reference some stuff like that. Find out what the usage rights are for um, calling up information, calling up photos in Twitch. Because I don't want to get the school in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble and have some photographer like spitting coffee out onto his computer and going, whoo, whoo. you know how hard I worked to get that photo? And this guy's just stealing it. So I'm uh, just using my own stuff. JD, hello, do I even want to know? No, you do not, man. No, you do not. I don't know what part you walked in on, but no, you don't. <laughs> um, you probably walked in on me and Harold talking about make it look dumb. <laughs> so, um, there you go, man. Glad you're joining us today. Hey, Maxine, 
See, I told you the law was going to show up. Maxine's the law. She's going to be like, oh, heard he was using copyrighted photographs up in his Twitch stream. <laughs> yeah, so no, she's cool. Uh, Maxine is our career development manager. She's the person you go to when you got like a bunch of questions about life and career and like when you panic, when you straight up panic and go, what am I going to do? Bang. That's the person. Photo looks like Mitch McConnell's final form. Yo, don't get me started on Mitch McConnell. Look, hold on, hold on. If we're gonna have that kind of, if we're gonna have that kind of day, let me turn off this sound. Let's, let's turn off this listening device I got sitting next to me. All right, because Google's got ears. Power off, son. All right, here we go. No, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> I am not going to do that. Nope. Plus, there'll be somebody in another country going, who is Mitch McConnell? Oh. <laughs> yes, I did. I mean, that's, that's kind of like, it's part of it. Oh, you know what I just thought about is this thing is going to have to not look like Admiral Akbar. That's like the, I think that was the challenge when I initially did the original uh, sculpture for this was, okay, don't make it look like Admiral Akbar, right? Um, it's a trap. <laughs> there you go. All right, here we go. So, big cheeks. Now, one way of doing this would be to just take that photo reference, and which would make a lot more sense, and just warp it into place and like photo bash it, um, photo bash it together. But uh, I'm not going to do that because. I want to just draw it and let's do this just giant cute looking Disney pupil I don't know if you guys can see this so I'm gonna just take uh, here, put it underneath this so that you can actually see what I'm drawing. Might actually help. Ah, that's a lot better. Go. Right. Okay. Now, did somebody say that I should give this guy a mohawk? Pretty sure somebody was like, give him a mohawk. Harold, was that you? I don't know. I think we were just on the dumb part. Make it look dumb. But why? This with it? A mohawk or a fin? Some kind of beta fish looking deal. Daughter got a beta fish this week. His name is Jackson. If we get four more of them, we can put them in the tank and call them the Jackson Five. Huh? Uh -uh, never mind. Probably before your times. Bunch of. Anyway.
All right, so let's do give him a mohawk, but. I think I will bug his eyes out. That's what that's what goldfish look like, right? <sighs> Even though I can't call it up on my screen, it would probably make sense for me to go look at what a goldfish looks like. Even though I'm not gonna share that image. Goldfish. Poor, silly-looking creatures. Um, with that forever duh face. All right. I don't know if I want, I don't want him to be smiling. Gotta have an O face. Some little tattoo type, not tattoo, but patterns on the skin, something like that, raised surface, put a little cast shadow just around there. Try to get that kind of human eye looking thing going there. You know what's a great reference for, oh man. Don't uh do do I? I was at a I was at a a farm was it not a farmer's market? I was at a some kind of carnival. I was at a carnival and they had a, a farm like farm attraction, so I was taking a picture of a uh, cow's eyes. That's right, because when I'm on vacation doing stuff with the family, I am forever in the moment. Taking pictures for reference for future stuff. Um, I didn't. I'd never realized how large a cow's eyeball is. Ever have the opportunity to go look at something like that? They're they're like it's like the it's like the size of a tennis ball. It's incredible. Too many thoughts. I don't, so we have a chin. Do we give him a chin? No, no chin. He'll look dumber if he doesn't have a chin. Why do you just spit coffee out on their computer? I'm like, I don't have a chin. I'm not dumb. Sorry, Ooh. man. Alright. So then. And here we go. So we had d discussed whether or not there were going to be like flaps of skin around the neck where the cut happens, where the where this lady's like axe, laser axe thing cuts him. So this is where we're just going to keep it smooth. Maybe put some like glowing effect in there. Yeah, I like the mohawk idea. But we'll make it look beta fishy. Did 
this mouth. Part of him still kind of, still looks happy. He looks happy. I don't want him to look happy. He's got to look dumb. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me look at a goldfish again. Oh. oh man, I didn't switch my screen. All right, so the legal legal team at Twitch come at me. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, I will save this image. Man, yeah. What else can I use? Good one. All right. So, so I'm doing this since I'm doing this in real time per week. There's no, uh, not planning ahead as far as what this is going to look like before sitting down with you guys to just do it so this is kind of the real time chaotic spastic thought process that goes on that I don't actually talk about um, so welcome to my brain I, I know what you're saying, but for some reason, it feels like, his face feels like, well, at least the mouth kind of has this Pokemon anime, like, Pikachu kind of smile feel to it. I don't know if I'm the only one seeing that, but I'm going to just change it so that doesn't drive me nuts. Maybe he doesn't have teeth. I think maybe that was maybe that's a part of it. So we go. I have some I have some reference actually called up on the screen now. So we go with uh the gills are down in here in his face. And then opposite side of the face, that cheek curling up, and this kind of jowly, baggy thing there for the back, gills. And then of a Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I give him a little couple baby teeth. That's better.
yeah like and i i and I, I know i've preached about this a few times on this stream but i i really heavily lean in on my students especially my advanced students that should know better don't make anything up and think you're going to slide it past me and be like yeah i think this looks good no it doesn't no it doesn't do it over then when you do it over go get some reference so you know what you're looking at that's all i mean i'm i'm the mentor but I'm not going to sit there and like applaud you for doing half the work when you could actually take the time to actually, you know, gather reference and do it right. So no thumbs up emoji for me. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maxine. I'm, I'm kind of, <laughs> I, uh, I get, I get a little raw in here. So, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And let's see, as far as the hair, go, all right, I'm not going to worry about the hair. Oh, before I go any further. I need to look up a cow's eyeball. That's right. Another thing you probably never thought you were going to hear today. Cow eyeball. Google's got everything. I dare you. I dare all of you right now. Stop what you're doing and go look up a cow's eyeball. And look at how large that thing is. It's a tennis ball. It's a tennis ball that fits in the palm of your hand. It's ridiculous. All right. Is that real? That is real. That's nasty. All right. <laughs> All right. Have that information. Let's dive into painting this dude's face. Um Just out of uh, just out of curiosity, should I should I do this in value first and then colorize it, or just go direct color? I'll I'll leave that. What do you guys think? I'll leave that up to you. By direct color, I mean I'll just figure out my values and color at the same time while working into while painting into the. Value first, boo. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. See, that's what I'm saying. They look crazy. That's how you feel most comfortable working? All right. No problem. All right. So let's say fish head values. So what I'll do is I'll take this, bada bing, bada bang, bada bang, and then polarize that. Let's have some fun with it. So anybody that has taken the current, that is currently in the Intro to Concept Art program um, knows how I 
how I get down with the values, blending stuff, and all that. So we're just going to dive right in. Should probably... Before I do anything else, first things first, is I'm going to make sure that all of my lines are connected. No, this is a little Somewhere I missed the spot.
Now, if you're watching this and uh, you have any questions about the process or something like that, feel free to ask. Um, I've also painted stuff like this a lot, so it's a little more natural and flowing than it might be for some students that are just starting out learning how to control the program. So there's that, All right? Melt, melty is that, are you just painting with a really light gray on a separate layer right now? Um, actually, yeah, my, so I'm, I know in your video content, it's probably talking about, um, creating like a base layer and then building up your values on a layer above that with your lights, your darks, or having your lights on a separate layer, your shadows on a separate layer, all that stuff so that you can turn off everything um, as you go, turn it off and on. Um, I'm, I don't do that because uh, I, you know, I prefer to just, I prefer more direct painting rather than doing it this way. But when I do do it this way, I do it all as if I'm just painting from life. Uh, so I'm, uh, baking everything into one layer. So yeah, so my line work for the fish head is above and I have it have a selection tool over it so that no matter what I do on this layer, it's not going to spill outside of it. So I'm just having some fun. Um, do you guys silhouette first when working on concepts for characters, or do you work out some ideas and then move to silhouettes? It, it varies. I mean, I pretty much had worked out a silhouette for this, an outline, a sketch for this, this fish head before moving to value. Um, but if I were to do, if I were to sit down, like if this were a concept art stream and I just worked out one sketch of a goldfish severed goldfish head and then wanted to do iterations on that yeah i would create some silhouettes and then play with the mohawk play with giving him some gills or, or some you know some mohawky looking fins uh along his sides of his jawline or something like that but um but i'm not doing that uh, here so um, says you may end up working on that. Yeah, go for it. It's it really comes down to what is most comfortable for you, and if you're comfortable uh, doing it a certain way, then keep doing that. So. I just know that I I have fun just rendering eyes and stuff like that. That's really fun stuff. But the reference that I have here is really great for not having to do a lot of guesswork when it comes to doing this. Uh, I'm pretty much following the same lighting scheme from that photo. And like from here, I could just go over top of the line work and continue rendering it to a point where I'm happy with it. So I'll start off and blend some of these colors together.
Duh. Yep. Those were his last words. Duh. That's what happens when you uh, don't hold your weapon properly. You get your head cut off. I don't know. She feels a little too proud of this moment. Like she didn't just cut off a... Like he was no challenge. I don't know. I guess a trophy's a trophy, right? Maybe their maybe their mohawks go for a lot on the black market. Yeah. So Melty, are you in the current intro to concept class? Because I actually walk you through exactly how uh I do that with uh, blending. Um, the exact settings and everything. So that, because um, I know that was a big issue for students in the past was, uh, geez, I'm, I'm hopped over to the advanced course with Hamza. Okay, so you might Oh, so if you're in the advanced course now, maybe you did. I don't know. Did hmm. So if you're taking the, did you did you take the intro or did you start off with the advanced? Because I'm just trying to figure out. Did you did you watch the did you see the videos um, on uh, value and value blending? I think it was for the demon book exercise. I'm just trying to see if you had access to that. I did not. I hopped right into the advance. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. So you, all right. So you didn't get those lessons. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll record a little a little video actually I did record a little video so I'll post it again Can we get access to those I'll post a little blending video on general digi paint for students that did not have not gotten access to or you know signed up for a class where this information was not given because a lot of the stuff that I do in this stream or a lot of the things that you see me painting or how you see me painting um i was only covering in the advanced illustration course and some of that was introduced to the intro students uh just this year like january so if you were not if you didn't start the intro program as of january i don't think you had access to it that's how it went yeah yeah no probs. So let's see, we got the light hitting there, cast shadows, all that junk and stuffs. Get some dodge tool popping in there. Pop, 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 pop. Right. And. I love the dodge tool. Don't let anybody talk down about the dodge tool in front of me. Absolutely love it. If you want to get that wet, kind of scaly look. Just burning it right in, dodging it right in. Uh, well, if you if you if you rewind this, you'll see that I started out. Well, no, you don't even have to rewind. I started out with a midtone, so this value here is well it's a value too but 
like I started out with a mid-tone for this shape. Um, what is what is my mid-tone in here? Like the value of that is probably like a is a value three, so I was only off by one value. But um, this is where I started from. My base was dark, so since my base was dark, I could go. Uh, a step below that, which is the darkness in the eye, the darkness in the mouth, which is like a value, two values darker than the skin tone right now. And then I could add in uh, a mid-tone in the light, which is like a value five. So that's uh, that becomes the uh, a, a light tone in the in the a light tone and a dark tone and then right between there I'm adding in my shadows so um, to answer your question in a very long-winded way um, no I, I build it up from dark to light um, but the the textures and stuff um, it's it goes back and forth so a lot of the stuff that you're seeing in here I'm just baking all into one layer so once I get my midtones once I'm happy with it uh, then I will start to build up again with dark shadowy textures in here and in, in the scales um, and the, the final touches are always the highlights like for this nose I knew that I wanted to put this in now and I wanted to put this highlight into the eye right now because I want to know what my brightest brights are um, on this face because like the light is raking down across this face it's most likely going to cast a shadow over this arm behind her behind its head but then that light is also hitting her armor like from that top left hand side so I wanted to keep that consistent uh, so I'll most likely end up uh like illuminating a lot of this side of the face well and then this lip but i want to keep everything feeling like kind of wet right so that makes sense Hope that makes sense. <laughs> oh good well <laughs> yeah I do the same thing when I watch videos but instead of nodding along I'm kind of like why is he doing it like that but everybody does it differently everybody does something a little different with this program and that's what I love about it I I know I, I tell students all the time uh, there's a thousand ways to do everything in Photoshop so don't get yourself all twisted and sensitive if your piece doesn't look like your favorite rock star artists, they're just using the program slightly different. Kind of compare it to uh, musicians, people playing the piano. You know, Hans Zimmer and James Horner play the piano two totally different ways. Music is still good. And uh, if you guys don't know who James Horner is, I'm going to end this stream right now. Right now. I kid you not. I'll just go shut it off. Just pretend like you know who I'm talking about. Just, just pretend like you know who I'm talking about. Uh, 
eye, forehead, gills, ear. Gasp. Gasp. Yeah. Uh, James Horner is like one of my favorite film composers. Um, I mean, one of his, like, he's done, a, he's done so much, so much. Um, I mean, uh, his, his sound is going to be missed. I, I, I was a big fan of the work he did for Willow and Krull and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Spider-Man, recent Spider-Man movies before the Marvel, before it went back to Marvel, the Avatar, av sound for Avatar, so many beautiful, beautiful scores. But this is somebody that composed his music on a piano like a, there's a lot of film composers that come they see music and they compose it on the piano and then it works on the piano it works for any other instrument so like you could treat photoshop like that and say okay well i'm going to use this tool or this lighting scheme i'm going to do it using this brush and it could be completely different from what somebody one of your peers might do so but it doesn't make it any less valid right so that those little spots maybe he's got little freckles right something like that oh yeah spotify has got his practically his entire orchestral library um i mean there's a few omissions for like whatever copyright reasons but yeah um huge body of work going all the way back to the 70s and i figure i feel like if he didn't if he didn't die unfortunately he would still be churning out he'd be composing you know, like avatar sequel soundtracks right now so if when you're watching the next avatar film and it sounds kind of like the the score is kind of uh, I don't know, repetitive or, or like you've heard it before, it's probably because you have. It's probably like unused tracks from the first film, unless they go with a different composer, which I, I hope they, I don't know. I don't want to get all emotional on my Twitch stream thinking about it oh there's that cheek but uh, Melty if you're still watching uh, I also never paint at full opacity either so I'm kind of building this all up, kind of like thin glazes. Think about it like that. Like if you've ever used watercolor, if you've ever painted traditionally, 
um, you know, you're you're going with transparent glazes of color to to build it up, right? Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So might have to lighten this up a little bit. Quick cheap way of doing it. Oh, all right. So let's figure out a color scheme. <clears throat> if yeah, I don't know who's watching or how many people may be watching, but uh, tell me, give me some suggestions. Color scheme, color of his mohawk, color of his skin. Are we going gold goldfish, like straight up goldfish, orangey, or are we going with something a little different? Toss your uh, green would be fun. Green would be fun. Are we talking full green or like uh, green, greenish pieces, uh, like trans, like blending into another color? All right, that's two for green. Okay. All right. So green it is. Going once. Going twice. Okay. If it's green, I think it should be yellowish green. Um, lime green with turquoise transitions for the mohawk and markings. Okay. All right. So we're going green. Turk. Let's. So let's. Let's. Let us. Uh. All right, so we'll do that. That works. That works for me. Um, let me get my palette. <sighs> Choose the right value of green to start with. Turquoise with orange. Let's find out if that works. Let's see, turquoise with. Uh, and with. Right. With the red, yellow, blue. Yeah, right. Like yellow or right. Yeah, so we can let's try this. So we got one. Green, green.
at green and then saying blue top of that. that one and and choose our palette for this thing it's gonna be fun Oh yeah. I've done this a few times, so I'm not outside of my comfort zone uh with this, which is nice. Last thing last thing you need is to have me panicking for two hours not knowing what to do. So let's tweak this so we get a little bit more of a Because I feel like that's the best of both worlds. We got our blues, we get our goldfishy oranges. Highlights can be yellowish, reddish tint. Right? And then we can play with the transitional values, transitional tones on the face this way. this and then overlay and attack it what we can come up with
Harold saying, I'm still very much a noob when it with color. I'm crazy about color. Usually I use too much or too little. So, Harold, the first thing you want to do when it comes to using color is think about what you're trying to say with the piece. What is the most important thing? Usually your, your brightest brights, your lightest light colors, your darkest dark colors, and your most colorful areas of interest are going to be around the focal point, right? So then how do you... Then it's really up to you to decide uh, how saturated to go. Is it an emotional scene? Is it a dark, scary scene? Is it something lighthearted for kids? Is it horror or something violent? Like does a, a uh, something more horror and, and, and scary need to be chromatic? Probably not. But like if you look at kids' books, everything's super saturated, right? Um, that's for a reason. It's psych psychologically, kids respond to bright colors. That's why you always know you're in the toy section of any department store, right? The minute you step out of the toy section, everything goes back to being gray and dull. Like, what? What are what's Apple computers' colors? Like white and white. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I forgot. They uh, they're coming out with um, not updated but new chromatic casings for their, all of their stuff, right? So you can get a, a purple Mac iMac. Ooh. Um, but yeah, like even that's not really pushing it. So stuff for adults seems to get a little bit more neutralized. But stuff for kids, stuff for different films, think about that. Like if you're if you're, whatever you were painting were to be made into a film, uh, what would it be? What, what, what would the palette be? And usually when you know that, it will give you a, a, a basis to go on for what colors to choose, how saturated those colors should be, and uh, kind of take some of the guesswork out. that uh, so what I tell my students my, my advanced students to do is to if they want to learn color it's really going to come from observation not going to come from you trying to guess and figure it out just blindly until you stumble upon a, uh, you know, the answer. 
it's going to come from you taking the time every day to uh practice to to do like landscape studies um what i have my students do is paint screen captures so if you're familiar there are there's a lot of different websites out there that have whole movies like frame by frame animated films live action films you name it action romance whatever um and if you were to study the works of a certain cinematographer uh and paint those screen captures you're going to learn a lot very quickly and then you can apply that understanding of light and color to your own work but uh some people don't want to do that you know there's this feeling like the information is just going to they're just going to get it one day. It doesn't work like that. It comes from really putting in the time. So. Oh, man. Uh, my students would tell you, I, I preach about the awesomeness of Kung Fu Panda all the time. I love that movie. In fact, uh, there's like few of my professional illustrations that are just like the color palette is just ripped directly from uh that movie unapologetically unapologetically because uh it's just so cool just the way it's lit the way it, the the palette the entire palette of the film uh is just so fantastic that's right it does slap it slaps hard Yep. So like Kung Fu Panda, like I tend to tend to really Oh man, of course my accountant would call right now. Uh, so uh I tend to uh look at a lot of animated films more so than live action. But that's not to say that there's no really good live action either. Um, if you look at the collective works of Roger Deakins, cinematographer for Blade Runner 2040, whatever, um, the last James Bond film, was it uh, Skyfall? Um, and a bunch of other films. Like, he's... He's another one that's just fantastic to study lighting from and how to just how to just to compose a shot. So um so a lot of the stuff that we teach you at CG Spectrum is across the board when it comes to composition, lighting, design, uh, especially composition and lighting. A lot of that stuff is also taught to cinematographers uh film majors so like uh like people that end up becoming film directors and cinematographers have to know the same things about composition that an illustrator or concept designer would um it's just that they get two hours to tell their story and you have one frame one image to sell your idea you know when it's a 2d image so that. Yeah, like when I'm looking at that stuff, I'm not even as much looking at the designs as much as I am just the palette. So, um,
yeah, go for it, man. Go for it. So I had one of my one of my advanced students do. Uh, I had one of my advanced students do um, screen paint a screen capture from Moana, and uh, one of the TAs has also uh, done something similar. The one of the teaching assistants on uh, the on the Slack channel for the school. Um, it's basically giving yourself a time limit. To say, okay, I'm going to paint this screen capture, but I'm only going to give myself half an hour to do it, or an hour to do it. All right. So if you guys come away from this live stream, and I go to General DigiPaint and see nothing but Kung Fu Panda, uh, like one hour studies, I'm going to be very happy because you're going to learn a lot from that. Um, seeing how far and how much you can paint from that in an hour. It's going to build up your understanding of light, color, value, everything. And uh, your, your speed, and your confidence level, all of that stuff is going to improve the more you do it. So then when you get into whoever your mentor's class is and you do that next project, you can attack it with confidence. That's what it's all about. Shouldn't be like freaking out. Oh my god, I gotta I gotta render this. She'd be oh sweet, I get to render this. Hold my hold my lemonade. About to go to town. So I think before I go any further with color, I'm going to finish rendering this eyeball meat. And if you didn't have enough giant alien cow ball, cow eye in your, on your TV screen right now, here it is at full resolution. All right, so Moo. So right over top of that, well, actually, I could probably do without the line work right now. Just dive right in. Yeah, I'll try that. Let's see how it works. This was my fish alien. Line. I'm going to turn that off. All right, let's, let's have some fun here. I should probably turn Slack off so you guys aren't all up in my business while I'm trying to digi paint here. Hold on a second. Oh. Oh, good. So Maxine, if you're still watching, uh, 
one of the students has reached out to you that I had I had referred her to you um and uh, she's very happy so um glad to uh connect people stuff and junks oh she left now we can talk out crying eyes and <laughs> let's see i don't even know how to turn this off get notifications oh oh pause notifications Pause notifications for two hours. All right. Her Holton shot. So, turn that off. So we're gonna just paint it down. This is where I have the most fun. <coughs> um, so it doesn't feel like I'm painting it twice. I just kind of just come in and refine my grayscale layer, where everything is baked in. And somebody might be sitting there watching this right now going, my other mentor doesn't do it like that. You're about to have a car accident. Don't do it this way. Oh my God. Back to what I was saying before about musicians playing the piano. Not wrong, it's just different. All right? Keep your pantyhose on, please. Just want to get a really nice render of an eyeball in here. And you might be saying, well, if I'm going to paint an alien, where do I get good reference of eyes? Well, you've got two pair of your own, right? Pair of your own. Right? Take a selfie. Take a picture of your friend or your family's faces. Press your, your smartphone right up into their face and take a picture of their eyes. The way you're going to get those expressive details, the wetness and all that stuff going on in the eye. You're going to be able to get all of that information. Then if you want to add, you want to make the pupils look a certain way or... Um, give the person snake eyes or whatever it is you want to do, you can do that. Because you'll have had that, you'll have that reference. <coughs> Frog eyes are pretty wild. Yes, they are. <clears throat> no, we are not, I'm not tainting. I'm not tainting my my Friday uh, saying that a demon's name because it's kind of like Candyman. You say his name more than three times, and you, you know, all of a sudden you find like five thousand dollars missing from your bank account. <laughs> Pretty sure that's how it works. So uh, no. Feels very Disney. 
right now. So I want to maybe enlarge it a little bit. I know goldfish just have really big eyes. Okay, so we're going to go with that. They have another ring of of uh, something going on. Yeah. skin or something play with it like that let's get into some specular stuff I mean, textures, sometimes textures is really just comes down to just scribbling something. There's no fancy secret brush involved. It's just a round brush with uh, brush dynamics checked. Harold, I'm very, I'm very sorry for that. So Harold's last thing, if you, I know for somebody who's watching this later on and doesn't know what's going on. So uh, Harold is saying that he's watched Candyman for the first time a few months ago. And after years of being called Candyman, um, similar to his last name, uh, Candy Land, is that Candy? No, is your last name is actually Candyman for real, for real? He says he never bothered watching it. Oh my god. Man. I would probably got into a lot of fights as a kid. But uh I mean, are you brave enough to say Candyman's name three times in a mirror? You are you You cool like that? Cuz I I would never do that. <laughs> candy land canned land and land oh man yep that's uh but i'm guessing you've got like a black belt in like jeet kune do or something gotta be a there's gotta be an upside to that story <laughs> yeah, Harold saw what happened to the kids in, in Candyman. He's not brave enough to 
say that that name three times in a row in a mirror. Nope. Okay, and those Here we go. Should there be a slice or a cut across his face? Maybe like some signs of battle or something like that? Thinking about that just now. What if there was just a big open gash like oh so her weapon is well when i finish it it's going to be like this uh axe thing of her body at I turn it off So yeah, she's got this this axe um, in there. So I figured I would give her some kind of uh, lightsaber type axe thing, and maybe this guy has a a slice going across his face. So then we would have to put in like a little indentation there. Push the idea that there's a dent in his face. Oh, getting warmer. Nope. That's pretty bad. All right, hold on. I have to do this the old-fashioned way.
Uh, there we go. Turn that off. And in. So I'll just erase out that part. that going in there we'll scratch toughen them up a little bit all right uh, well as far as like showing it being carterized or, or something, when I get to the, when I finalize the color stage of it, I can always put some kind of little afterglow, little orangey burning light, you know, trim underneath the, the neck there. Um, and maybe show that it is a fresh cut. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, That's that. Um, all right. Play with the a, a lot of textured brushes that I don't play with often. Let's see what the fun part about doing these kind of things is that it's like two hours to really experiment.
So it goes one. That's that. Should be carving it out from the traditional thing. That shrimp there. That theatrical lighting effect to the head, so creating more of a three point lighting effect going on. Works. We got the main light, backlight, still. Touch all that stuff. Stuff. So that's what I got for you guys today. Um, I'm going to finish working on this guy or these two characters next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, or if you do have questions and you're a CG Spectrum student, you can always message me through Slack anytime. Uh, you know, so, uh, otherwise I will catch you all, uh, next week. All right. Thanks for joining me.